folks, let's just go ahead and start with a little prayer. If we could, if you guys would just hold hands and stand up together. I know you do, but it works out. When there are toes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Father, and all those folks who are here, glorious God. Father, we pray for those who aren't. Father, I pray that your message tonight, Father, is for them that you gave me, Father. And Father, I just pray for, Heavenly Father, you just speak to them, Father, as individuals and Father, as a church. It brings them more together, Father, and also their focus is on you. Holy Spirit, be here in this message. And Father, I give you all the praise and all the glory in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus and Nazareth. Amen. 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 So how are we doing tonight? You guys doing good? Jury to start this, Cody? Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. We got a message for you this week. Uh, I don't, the Lord does. Uh, out of all the books in the Bible, the one that was chosen here in the dream is kind of a different one, but it's it's not something I would think of automatically because it's a very small book in the Bible. Have you guys ever heard of uh, Zephaniah? Very small books. One of the minor prophets who actually wrote during the time of Josiah, who Cody talked about last week, and also Jeremiah around the same time. Uh, we all know that Josiah had gone in and restored the kingdom of God in the right way by tearing down all the altars and stuff. But we know like immediately after that it got worse again. We know that. And he was prophesying for that time for Judah and also for the time to come, which is right now, the end of days, which is here upon us. We see the wickedness. We see the, the, the evilness and the day of the Lord is at hand. We know that. And it's something we have to keep watch for all the time. And I pray tonight when I bring this message, it's done in love, but also man, there's so much here in, the, in these three chapters. There's probably about 53 verses total, but I want to bring it to you guys and just let you understand how important this truly is. Where we're standing at the very end when he returns, our, for instance, our relationship with him better be right on. And if it's not, it's going to not be good. So anyway, let's start in the very first chapter of uh, Zephaniah, right after Habakkuk. You guys have turned your Bibles there with me, please. If you have a cell phone, put it on silent for me, if you don't mind. And thank you for all you folks who got here early tonight. It was nice. Thank you. If we get started on time, I appreciate it. Okay. The very first verse. It says, The word of the Lord which came to Zephaniah, the son of Cushi, the son of Kedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord right there means it's, uh, Debar is the very first part of that in the Strong's. It's, it's uh, 1697 in the Strong's, but it means act or advice and answer of a book. All right? And it also says any such thing because of business, speech. All right? But the word of the Lord is Yahweh, right? We know who Yahweh is? It's mentioned 6,218 times in the Bible. That's the name of God is Yahweh, right? Do you guys agree with that? Yes. We know there's a Hebrew pronunciation, but for us to be able to understand and do it, probably right, I'm going to say Yahweh. Uh, the dream I had was I was driving a car, and there was a man in the back seat of the car. And he asked me, he goes, what book should I read to my wife? And I said, Zephaniah. And he goes, Zephaniah. I said, Zephaniah. Well, Zephaniah, speaking of wife, that's our church. Also, the church body is the wife, the bride of God, right? That's the bride. So I said to read Zephaniah, so we're going to read Zephaniah, all right? So that's a dream I had this week. So I'm going to read it. <clears throat> Verse number two says, the Lord's speaking here, right? I will, I will utterly consume everything. From the face of the land. I will consume men and beasts. I will consume the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, and the stumbling blocks along with the wicked. I will cut off man from the face of the land, says the Lord. Did you guys hear that? He says, I will consume everything 
We know that the, the world is destined for fire. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. This world will be consumed with blazing fire. And by the way, man, the name Zephaniah, what it means, has a couple of meanings. One of them means Yah has treasured and also Yah has hidden. Yah has hidden. I want to be hidden when that happens. What about you guys? Protected? I want to be, right? When the fire comes, do you want to be protected? Yeah, yeah I do too. <laughs> so Yah has hidden. Remember that. That's Zephaniah's name is Yah has hidden. All right. And when I told them about a book, I told you guys a while ago, the word means act, advice, answer. It could be in any such thing because of book. There's actually a book in that pronunciation for the name of it. So it's pretty cool. The very first sentence has book in it. What he's talking about. Uh, my page turned from the fan here. Hang on a second. Here we go. So I will consume everything from the face of the land, says the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, and the stumbling blocks along with the wicked. The very first time we know that the fish in the sea survived, did they not? When there was the great flood of Noah, the fish did survive. And the stumbling blocks along with the wicked. I will cut off man from the face of the land, says the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against Judah, verse 4, and against all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will cut off every trace of Baal from this place. The names of the idolatrous priests with the pagan priests, those who worship the host of heaven on the housetops, those who worship and swear oaths by the Lord, but also swear by Milcom, those who have turned their back from following the Lord. You had Baal, which we know who Nimrod was, right? Nimrod? We know who Nimrod was, right? He was building the, tire, the uh, Tower of Babel. And we've seen all the issues with that. We had a lot of issues start from that time forward. And also, when God was sitting in Joshua, he told them, destroy all these other countries. The Ammonites, the Moabites, all these other folks. Because if you don't, then you're going to have issues with them. And he also told them, man, don't pick up their ways of doing things, their traditions. Don't grab onto them. We still have the same thing today, right? Traditions, do we not? We know a lot of those today, man, people aren't reading your Bible, man. They're doing a lot of things with the Easter eggs and Santa Claus. They're doing a lot of things that aren't biblical, that you can't even find in the Bible. And if we can only worship in spirit and truth, if we know it's not truth, and God's not getting the glory for it, somebody else is. Man is, right? So man's getting glory for something that's been created by man. So we have all this pagan worship going on that he hated. He warned Israel so many times, back away from what you guys are doing. Quit doing these things. And what happened? He would come in and destroy them over and over and over. So when he returns this last time, we have a lot of folks who are the ones say, always say, folks, I'm going to show you a scripture that's in Zephaniah here that's going to show you. That ain't the truth. Because he talks about those who walked away from him. He says that. He's going to destroy them. He says, I will cut off, number four, I will cut off every trace of Baal from this place. The names of the idolatrous priests with the pagan priests. Those who worship the host of the heaven on the housetops. That's the stars. We have people who do the horoscopes and Jupiter and Venus. We have people who worship Thor and Odin and all this nonsense. That's not God. There's one God, you guys. One God. God, one God alone, there is no other. We have one God. If you worship anything else besides God, wrath is going to come on you. Wrath's coming for you. You better be worshiping the right God, and it better not be you either. You can't be that God. It can only be Him. Amen? Amen. Verse 5, those who worship the host of heaven on the housetops, they had flat houses, they still do now, but they would get up there and worship the stars. Those who worship and swear oaths by the Lord, but who also swear by Milcom. Those who have turned back from following the Lord. Those who have turned back from following the Lord. Did you hear that? Someone who once followed the Lord and turned back. So at one time they followed him. Now they don't. And have not sought the Lord nor inquired of him. Number seven. Be silent in the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has invited his guests. And who's all invited? Everybody's invited. Everybody's going to be invited. You can't get away from this one. 
And you can buy one of them bunkers. You can put it underground. You can go try and hide in the rocks. You can get in the bottom of the ocean. He will find you. There's no place to hide. You can go into space. It doesn't matter. There's no place to hide. Verse number 8. And it shall be in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with foreign apparel. What's foreign apparel? People who's taken on everything but God. You wear something that has nothing to do with him. Your life resembles the world. Everything about you, your speech, your talk, your act, resembles the world. You are the world. That's who you are. You're foreign apparel. You put on the world. You're wearing the world as your suit, as your tie, as your jacket. You're wearing the world. You're not wearing him, and you're not covered in the blood of Jesus. That's what he's saying right here. He says, In the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the princes and the king's children, and all such are clothed with foreign apparel. So they don't know him. They have no relationship with him. And they've gone after other gods to worship them, right? Gods that are created. They've gone after those gods. Verse number 9, In the same day I will punish all those who leap over the threshold, who fill their master's house with violence and deceit. So all these folks who live by the sword and the violence and deceit, and they're going to be destroyed. At the same time, you guys, this message is called judgment or blessing. Yes, it's a good thing that he's going to judge. Why? So those of us who are left have peace here. So we have peace. We have the peace of the Lord here. All that nonsense is going to be removed, and that's going to be spectacular. That's going to be good for us. But those who don't believe, it's not going to be good for them. But he's knocking on doors still. Verse number 10. And there shall be on that day, says the Lord, the sound of a mournful cry from the fish gate. There's several gates, actually 12 gates going into Jerusalem in the old, the old uh, Jerusalem quarters there. There's 12 gates. The fish gate was on the west side. I couldn't tell you much more about it, but anyway. A welling from the second quarter and a loud crashing from the hills. Well, you, inhabit, you inhabitants of Mektesh, for all the merchant people are cut down. All those buying and selling, making their, their money who are greedy, who are trying to make a buck. Their main focus is the dollar. Their love of money will be cut down. All those who handle money are cut off. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men. Who were settled in complacency. Did you guys see that one? Who say in their heart the Lord will not do good nor will he do evil. And there's a lot of people who live in that complacent place. They think the Lord hasn't came. And I was talking to a lady last Saturday in oil bill. I think J.J. was with me. He may have been standing next to me. But she goes, the Lord hasn't came yet. I've heard that my entire life. And I go, man, it's 1 Peter 3, I believe, that says not that one should perish. He wants everybody to have a chance at repentance and to turn to him. And she goes, I'm so tired of hearing that. I've heard it all my life. Our next breath is not guaranteed at all. If something happens to us before he returns, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm telling you the truth. Everybody in this room, if there's 25 people here, all 25 of us, and we're all destined for death, are we not? If the Lord doesn't return the next, you know, it's true. We're all going to die. You will quit breathing someday. Where are you going? Have you planned on where you're going to? Don't wait till the last second of your life, your last breath to decide. That's the wrong time. Wrong time. Day late and a dollar short there. Okay. Who were settled in complacency, who say in their heart, the Lord will, will not do good, nor will he do evil. Verse 13. Therefore their goods shall become booty, as their houses a desolation. They shall build houses, but not inhabit them. Well, they shall plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. We have folks who are saving all their money. They're getting it all saved up to build these huge properties and down the road. And everything's about them. Hey, I've got you know this whole... All these cars in a garage. Come look at this. I've got this over here. Everything their focus is on everything that they've purchased or bought. You know, or they're planning on buying. It's all about what they're doing with their money. Verse 14. Big verse. Look at this. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastens quickly. 
The noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. There the mighty men shall cry out. So people who are mighty, people who are mighty, and think of somebody who's mighty. Maybe a Navy SEAL or an Army Ranger or you know, whoever. Somebody who's faced death. Shot it out, whatever else. There the mighty men shall cry out. They're scared. They're terrified. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers. The day of the Lord. I'm not talking about the Lord's day that people get mixed up. The day of the Lord is mentioned 86 times in the Bible. But a lot of people like to take the day of the Lord and try and use it in Revelations 1 and go, it means Sunday. No. Sunday got changed by Constantine in 326 A.D. by the sun worshipers. That's the Catholic Church. That's when that happened. You guys know that. If you read your Bible and study history, you'll find out. The Sabbath still exists Friday to Saturday. Been there forever. It's never changed. The Bible's consistent from the Old Testament to the New Testament. It hasn't changed. Yes, you can worship any day if you want. But God said to rest on when? Seventh day, the Sabbath day. He said to rest. We're supposed to rest. There's nothing wrong with that. I want the blessing and favor. I don't. Or I do, I'm sorry. I do. These other folks don't. But that's the problem. It says uh, the great day of the Lord. I'm going to mention a few days of the Lord here. I got on my computer. I'll read them for you. And I'll give you the verse. The day of the Lord, 86 verses. Isaiah 24, 21, 22. So it will happen in that day that the Lord will punish the host of heaven on high and, and the kings of the earth on earth. So they will be gathered together like prisoners in the dungeon and will be confined in prison. And after many days, they will be punished. Is it what? That's Isaiah 24, verses 21, 22. This is when Ezekiel, another prophet... Chapter 30, verses 3 and 4. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. A sword will come upon Egypt, and anguish will be in Ethiopia. When the slain fall in Egypt, they will take away their wealth, and their foundations are torn down. Revelation 6. Verses 15 and 17. <clears throat> then the kings of the earth and the great men and the commanders and the rich and the strong and every slave and free man hid themselves in the caves. And among the rocks of the mountains, they said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Isaiah 2.12. For the Lord of hosts will have a day of reckoning against everyone who is proud and lofty and against everyone who is lifted up, that he may be abased. That's everyone who is arrogant. Joel 1.15, alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is near and will come as destruction from the Almighty. So what's the day of the Lord? It's going to be a day of wrath and anger for all those who rejected God. They rejected the Word of God. Some people may have went to church for 20 years, but never truly wanted to know the Bible because it didn't add up with what they wanted. And I see it today. I've been to many churches. I see it today. People are never changed. Why? Because God's not good enough for them. And they want to do their own thing. I'd rather do my own thing and figure that out down the road. Right now, I'm doing me. You're not going to be able to do you when he returns. I'm not trying to scare you. But I don't want your blood on my hands either. I'm not going to preach a sugar-coated gospel for you to go out and live like a heathen. I'm not going to do it. I want you guys, and I want you guys to be changed. I want you to be converted for when he comes. Where you don't have to be staggering and trembling all afraid. You can go, Lord, I've been waiting for you my whole life. I've given my life to you. I've planned on this day. I've watched for you. My heart's yours. Nothing else. It's yours, God. I live for you, God. You're all that matters to me. This world means nothing to me. And also Matthew 7 Verses 22 and 23. Many will say to me on that day, this is Jesus, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, 
I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That's Jesus. These are people in the church who are casting out demons. These are people in the church who are preaching in his name. But behind closed doors, inside their heart, he never had their hearts. Didn't have their hearts. <coughs> he never had them. And he knew it. So when they come up and say, Lord, I did all these things. I don't know. You get away from me. You imagine? That's beyond pain. John 12, 48. He who rejects me and does not receive my sayings has one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him at the last day. Who's the word that became flesh and dwelt among us? Jesus. Jesus is coming back. And he's coming with a vengeance. Right? First time he came as a little bit pretty little lamb. Well, he's coming back as a king. And a king carries a sword on his side. And his robe's going to be dipped in blood. Millions. Billions are going to be dead. Famine, pestilence, by the sword, dead. Am I trying to scare you? No. That's going to be a complete wipeout. Who wants to be hidden for that? I do. I want to be hidden. You guys want to be hidden? I do. I want to be hidden. Romans 2.5. But because of your stubbornness and unrepentant heart, you're storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of who? God. Here's Jeremiah talking about it, another prophet. <laughs> Jeremiah 30, 7 and 8. Alas, for the day is great, there is none like it. And it is the time of Jacob's distress, but he will be saved from it. It shall come about in that day, declares the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off their neck and will tear off their bonds and the strangers will no longer make them slaves. So all of those people who were living for God will have those bonds broken off of them. All the things that weighed them down, all the people around them living like the devil will finally be removed. Isaiah 11, 11. Then it will happen on that day that the Lord will again recover the second time with his hand the remnant the remnant of his people who will remain from Assyria. Assyria back then was Iran and Iraq. That's the Syrian area. From Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. Micah 4, 6, 7. In that day declares the Lord, I will assemble the lame and gather the outcast, even those whom I have afflicted. I will make the lame a remnant. And the outcast, a strong nation, the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now and forever. So you guys understand that the day of the Lord is what? It's a day of reckoning. It's a day of wrath. It's a day of redemption for those who have been waiting. Right? So back to verse Zephaniah 1, 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastens quickly. The noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. There the mighty men shall cry out. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers. Verse 17, I will bring distress upon men and they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. And these are guys who never repented. They had a chance the whole time to repent, but they wouldn't turn from their ways. Because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like refuse. Neither their salvation nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured. Zephaniah 1.18. So people who are rich, their money cannot save them that day. They can't be saved. Either they're prepared for the day of the Lord or they're not prepared. They've made a choice. They made a conscious choice. They may have said they were living for God, but they weren't. Verse, the rest of that verse, by the fire of his jealousy, for he will make a speedy riddance of all, riddance of all those who dwell in the land. That remnant, Strong's word, 7611, Sharif, rest, residue, remainder, left rest, survivors, those who have escaped, those who have escaped the wrath of the Lord. 
those who have escaped, those who are hidden. Some say those who are, the Bible says, caught up. Will be protected from that wrath that's coming. There's some that's still going to be walking and bringing the gospel. Those last days, they will still be here. They'll still be walking. Chapter 2. Gather yourselves together. Yes, gather together, O undesirable nation, before the decree is issued, or the day passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you. He says, gather together before he comes. Gather together and repent and say, all right, Lord, I'm living for you. I'm going to follow your word. I'm going to believe your word. I don't care if the world follows it. I don't care if the world does it, but I'm going to. You guys, we're talking about eternity. When I got this word for Zephaniah, I mean, we're talking about, it says Yahweh hides. We're talking about eternity here. It's resting on this. Eternity, man, that's forever. We're talking about forever, not just today, forever. And if you're living for this moment, for right now, and it's all that matters, and you're planning on later to do it, show me the guarantee, and you'll get that chance. That would be the worst odds ever. I couldn't imagine. So gather yourselves together. Yes, gather together, O undesirable nation, before the decree is issued, or the day passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth. And all those who are oppressed, who are poor, who have been beaten down by all those around them. For the relationship with God. <coughs> people are oppressed. A lot of people are oppressed. Why? Because there's other people in spots who keep them down. But not forever. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who have upheld his justice. Seek righteousness. What's righteousness? It's to walk right. It's to make good, right decisions ethically. You make ethical decisions when no one's around. The right one always. Do you screw up sometimes? You may. But your mind's being obedient to God and His commandments. You're not being obedient to yourself. You're not trying to fit in into where the world wants you to fit in. You don't care if you're a lone voice because you're not by yourself. When that day comes and he returns back, we're going to see how awesome it is for those believers who have walked it out the way they should have walked it out. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing for us. But for others, it's not. But that's their choice. And our eyes are going to be open to his judgments, pure and perfect, is it not? And you're going to tell God, hey, God, man, let them go because I like them. Will that work? No. They made their own choice. If somebody makes their choice to live like a heathen and a devil... And he returns while they're doing that. That's up to them. That's up to them to live that way. But they made their choice. Verse number four. For Gaza shall be forsaken and Ashkelon desolate. They shall drive out Ashdod at noonday. And Ekron shall be uprooted. Woe to the inhabitants of the seacoast. Something about Zephaniah. I mean, if you look at Isaiah, you look at Jeremiah, I mean, you look at Micah. This guy here sums it up in three short chapters. Kind of everything they talked about. He just puts it like Mark a little bit. He doesn't have all the details. He just kind of, there it is. You know, he shoots from the hip. He shoots it out there. Man, there's nothing like this kind of getting to it. He's straight to the point. And that's better that way, right? You don't have to read as far, do you? To find out what you need to do. It's pretty simple. Follow God. Woe to the inhabitants of the seacoast. The nation... The nation of the Trithites. The word of the Lord is against you. That's the word of Yahweh. O Canaan, land of the Philistines, I will destroy you. So there shall be no inhabitant. The, verse 6. The sea coast shall be pastures with shelters for shepherds and folds for flock. The coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. We just talked about the remnant. The remnant's a small piece. The remnant's a small piece. And if I was taking a remnant off the shirt... A remnant would be a small little piece off this. That's it. That's a remnant. It's not very much. A lot of people, hey, everybody gets to go. No, they don't. That narrow path gets to go. Those who walk the narrow road. Not the wide road. Those who walk the narrow road. Everybody doesn't get a trophy for, for participating. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not that. Everybody gets a ribbon. It's not going to happen. So we've got to be prepared. But i got... 
Zephaniah, man, it's man, it's a hard hitter. Zephaniah is a hard hitter. But it's if he wants his priest, it's one I'm going to bring to you guys because it's so true. We have to be prepared for the day of the Lord when he returns. We're not prepared. We're going to be caught with our pants down. Is that a bad place to be? <laughs> yeah. You don't and you don't want to be caught exposed. You don't want to be exposed when he returns with anything going on. Okay, verse number uh, 7. The coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah, but they shall feed their flocks there, and the houses of Ashkelon they shall lie down at evening. For the Lord their God will intervene for them and return their captives. Verse 8. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the insults of the people of Ammon. We remember Lot, don't we? Slept with his daughters, the Moabites. Remember those folks? Yeah, they didn't do well. It says, And the insults of the people of Ammon, which they have reproached my people and made arrogant threats against their borders. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be like Sodom, and the people of Ammon like Gomorrah. It's overrun with weeds and salt pits, and a perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall plunder them, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. Verse 10. It says, This they shall have their pride, because they have reproached and made arrogant threats against the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be awesome to them, for he, for he will reduce to nothing all the gods of the earth. All the gods of the earth, right? All the gods of the earth. That's everything that the people have put on a pedestal above God will be flattened out. There will be nothing left of it. For he will reduce to nothing all the gods of the earth. People shall worship him, each one from his place, indeed all the shores of the nations. You eat the opians also shall be slain by my sword. And he will stretch out his hand against the north, destroy Assyria, and make Nineveh a desolation, as dry as the wilderness. The herd shall lie down in her midst, every beast of the nation, both the pelican and the bitter shall lodge on the capitals of her pillars. Their voice shall sing in the windows, desolation shall be at the threshold. For he will lay bare the cedar work. This is, this is the rejoicing city that dwells securely. It said in her heart, I am it, and there is none besides me. How has she become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down? Everyone who passes by her shall hiss and shake his fist. For some of those who got here late, I'll just share just a quick synopsis. Had a dream. There was a man. I was driving my car. He was in the back seat. He asked me what book in the Bible he should read to his wife, and I said, Zephaniah. The wife is considered the bride of the church, the wife of the church. That's who we are. We are the body of the church. So I'm reading this. I'm reading this to all you guys. And this message is called Judgment or Blessing. We're going to find out what the blessing is here in a minute. But so far, so far, man, there's been a butt whooping taking place, right? Man, an eternal butt whooping. It's forever. And there ain't no getting out of the corner on this one, right? There's not. You can't come back and say after the fact, Hey, Lord, I considered uh, what you said, and I've changed my mind. Too late. You should have changed your mind prior. Chapter 3. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted. And you see that in America? Rebellious. And you see it when in Israel now, too? Rebellious, polluted. There's all kinds of things going on in the cities that are just deceitful. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted to the oppressing city. She has not obeyed his voice. And he's talking about the church here. She has not <coughs> obeyed his voice. She has not received correction. And how many people have to be corrected like five times for the same thing? Sometimes ten times. Sometimes I'm talking horrendous correction. I'm talking the same thing keeps happening, but the correction you keep slipping out of it, somehow getting loose out of it, and sliding away thinking, hey, man, I got out again. It's a matter of time before you get your booty handed to you. It's coming. It's coming. I'm just being straight with you. It's a matter of time before correction day. Have you guys ever played football? Have you ever blindsided somebody? I'm talking, they don't see you, and you're running full speed, and you put your head in front of theirs, and I'm talking just like declete them. <laughs> That's what's going to happen, but worse. You're going to get just depleted and going, well, all those other 50 times I never woke up, you know, and stopped. I just kept doing the same thing over and over and over, thinking God would never return like he said in his word. Do I believe his word when it says? Am I prepared? 
He's coming back for his kids, but he's also squashing all those who drove his kids nuts, who harassed them, who belittled them, who destroyed them for no good reason. She has not obeyed my voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in the Lord. Ouch. Do you hear that? She doesn't want correction. The church doesn't want correction. Don't correct me. Don't you dare correct me. I don't want the correction. Don't correct me. I've heard it enough times. She has not trusted in the Lord. Do we trust in the Lord? Do we trust in the Lord? Do I believe he's going to return? And do I believe... He has my best interest in mind when he gave me the commandments. And do I believe that's for my best interest? Then why don't I follow it? Why don't I follow it? And why don't I follow his lead and be obedient to him? Because I'm caught up in the world and want to be friends with the world and be their buddy too at the same time. Just kind of play both sides. I can't do that. I can't do that, church. Because if I keep doing that, it's going to be ugly for me. It's going to be ugly for my family. For those who follow me, if I'm doing these things, they're going to say, hey, man, he doesn't want me to do it, right? It's so easy to follow the wrong path. She has not trusted in the Lord. She has not drawn near to her God. And that's why most of us never find God. You don't draw near to him. You don't draw near to him on your face. You're not surrendering to him. You're not finding your prayer closet. You're not getting alone with him. Too busy, right? Too busy. How many of us are just too busy to do that? Don't raise your hand because I'd be, I would raise my hand right now. <laughs> Are you too busy? Make time. If something's important to you, you'll make the time, right? And my son just had a graduation. We're going to be there no matter what. It's our son. We're going to be at his graduation. We're going to be there. If we have to take a taxi or an Uber, we're going to be there. It's our son, right? You want about God? Am I going to make time for him? I better, huh? I better make the time and draw near to him so he'll draw near to me. That's all I got to do. I got to draw near to God so he can draw near to me. But if I don't draw near to him, he's not going to draw near to me. If I'm truly seeking him out and I'm thirsting for him, I'm going to find him. I may not like all the answers I get and find out all the things I got to correct. That's okay. That's fine. It's worth it. It's worth it, you guys. Verse 3. Her princes in her midst are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave not a bone till morning. Her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. Have you guys ever looked online to see how many prophets there are? They're predicting all this nonsense and all these other things. It's ridiculous. There's 50 zillion prophets out there right now. You can go online and put in the two witnesses. And there's like all these people, I'm one of the witnesses, and they're on there. It's just, it's ridiculous. There's people who, who have been in church and they're doing some stupid stuff. And they're bringing up their own doctrines and trying all these crazy things. It's, and none of it's biblical. I mean, you can listen to them for a few minutes and see if they're actually reading from the Bible. If you turn on your, and if you turn on your TV... If you go to a church somewhere, and if someone doesn't start giving some Bible verses out of this, I would get up and leave. I'm not saying that you can't share a testimony. If it's a testimony day, fine. But that person who's sharing testimony probably has some verses they'll share too. Because it's about God's glory, right? You need to be sharing from the Word of God. <laughs> not just sharing. Sharing His Word. Because His Word is what breaks the chains. But if I can't lead you to him, then who am I going to lead you to? Myself? I can't save you. Cody can't save you. We can't save you. He can. So that's why I'm reading his word. Okay. Where was that? Verse 4 still? The rest of it? Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. Verse 5. The Lord is righteous in her midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings justice to light. Every morning. And when I read that, and you know what I think of right there when I read that verse? For my first thought that popped in my mind. Early morning, and I was working patrol. And where the dead body calls, or people have died in their sleep. 
A lot of people die in the early morning between, they go to bed, the next day you get a phone call, hey, so-and-so just woke up and found their husband or whoever, they died in their sleep. But more people than not have their, uh, their heart attacks in the early morning. Most men will have a heart attack in the early morning hours while they're resting. Is that kind of strange? Early morning. So every morning he brings his justice to light. So all the things that happened the night before, there's going to be light shed on it the next day, right? There's justice the next day because we're going to find out. Verse 6, I have cut off nations. Their fortresses are devastated. I have made their streets desolate with none passing by. Their cities are destroyed. Have you guys ever seen Syria on TV? That's a hellhole, isn't it? Have you ever looked at it? It's just, just rock. It's miles of rock. They're just crushed everywhere. It's, it's horrible. Yeah, rubble is a good word. It's horrible. Their cities are destroyed. There is no and no inhabitant. I said, surely you will fear me. You see that word right there? You will fear me. A lot of people don't like to fear God. They better fear him. You will receive instruction so that her dwelling would not be cut off. Despite everything for which I punished her, but they rose early and corrupted all their deeds. So they were getting up every day for themselves and not for God. They were doing things for themselves and not for the Lord. Just a second. Okay, here we go. So now we're getting to some blessing here. <laughs> yes? The trucks that drive around with the sign on the back, no fear. Yeah. Right here, fear the Lord. Yeah. We're supposed to fear the Lord. If you don't fear the Lord, you have no reverence for him. He's not holy to you. And you're trying to tell him what to do. And like it says, like in the Bible, for the, the, uh, the a plasterer and, and like the cup. You're making the cup. Like we're the cup, but we're, we're trying to tell him what to do. How to make the cup. How to drink out of it. He made us. He tells us what to do. Verse number eight. Here we go, guys. Therefore, wait for me, says the Lord, until the day I rise up for plunder. So those right now who are distressed, you're walking it out. <coughs> you're walking with the Lord. And yes, you go to work and you hear people profanity. They're porn. Their lifestyles are adulterous lifestyles. Everything going on around you, yes, it makes you mourn inside. It hurts. It's hard. Yes. He says, wait. Wait for me. Be patient. He's going to come. He's coming. Keep being steady. Keep being steady. My determination, I'm sorry, my determination is to gather the nations to my assembly of kingdoms, to pour on them my indignation. All my fierce anger, all the earth shall be devoured with my fire of jealousy. All the earth, right? He didn't say, and he's going to leave out someplace up in Idaho. I've got hidden with a shelter there waiting for that day and all this food, all this stuff, right? He says all the earth. <laughs> all the earth, guys, right? Can't hide. Verse 9, for then I will restore to the peoples a pure language that they may all call on the name of the Lord. I looked at this a little bit. A pure language. It meant to purify, to select a choice, one accord, to purge out the rebels from sinfulness to holiness. Because if we're living in lies, what are we doing? We're speaking, and our tongues are speaking deceit. You know, some people say in the Bible, or Theologians believe that the pure language is like going back to the pure language that was once spoken. That may be it. But what I'm saying is everything you say lines up with him. Everything you do lines up with him, and it glorifies God. Your actions, your speech, your walk, your talk, everything. So check this out. For then I will restore, I'm sorry, restore to the people a pure language that they all may call on the name of the Lord to serve him with one accord, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my worshipers, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. In that day, in verse 11, in that day you shall not be shamed for any of your deeds in which, in which you transgress against me. For then I will take away from your midst those who rejoice in your pride, and you shall no longer be arrogant, haughty in my holy mountain. I will leave in your midst, here we go, verse 12. I will leave in your midst A meek and humble people. He says, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. I want people who are humble, people who are meek. 
not people who are arrogant, who are loud, who are obnoxious, who have all the answers. No. He says a meek and a humble people. Right? And they shall trust in the name of the Lord. What's his name? Yahweh. The remnant of Israel shall do no unrighteousness. They shall do no unrighteousness. And speak what? No lies. They're not going to be lying. If I go up to Patrick and say, hey man, I'll be there tomorrow and help you work on your car. My word's going to be good. You know what I mean? That means something. When you tell somebody something, well, something crazy comes up and you fall over dead. But I'm saying, a man back in the day, when a man said something to someone, his word was good. You know, I know that's man's word, but those who are Christians who follow God, when they say something, they follow through and do it. And do they not? They do it. They do it. Nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed their flocks and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. So we're not going to be afraid of bombs at night or something happening to us or someone breaking in or stealing your stuff. That fear is not going to be there. It's going to be gone. Verse 14. Saying, O daughter of Zion, shadow Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart. He's saying rejoice. The Lord has taken away your judgments. And my judgment hung on a cross. And I believe that he hung on a cross. I believe the judgment that was meant for me, my Savior took. He took a beating for it and died for it and rose on the third day. For me, he took that. And I receive that. I receive that. Because if I don't, I mean, there's a judgment that's coming that's much worse than eternal judgment. I don't want that. So, the Lord has taken away your judgments. He has cast out your enemy. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. So we're not going to be having earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, fires, famine, cancer, gone, right? You shall see disaster no more. In that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear. Stand right there, do not fear. See, just change it up a little bit for your sticker. Do not fear, Zion, let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. And God does rejoice over us. He rejoices over his children when they come to him. This is the angel saying when one sinner repents. God rejoices over his children. He's excited about you. He knows your every thought. He's waiting to return. He's waiting. And we should be looking forward to that day. And telling everybody about him that he's coming so they can be prepared. You don't want to mess this. Verse 17. The Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. Did you hear that? He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. That's pretty amazing. I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly. Want that minute in that verse right there, I looked it up. I was thinking like maybe he was talking about the feast days or right here, man, it actually meant and those who gather in the synagogue or the temple they don't gather anymore but those who sorrow you know, when I stand at this window you guys, you have no idea when I stand at this window if you're looking it up now, it's also Lamentations 2.6 is the same word and sometimes I'll stand at this window and I'm like watching for people to come and I get so excited when somebody I haven't seen in a long time like a little kid when uh, and Marcos and Kathy showed up I haven't seen them probably when they months to a year maybe they pulled in man i was like hey cody look who's here it's, it's marcos and kathy i was so excited why because i haven't talked to them in so long i've sent them tags and scriptures but we haven't had a chance to love on them we haven't seen them in so long and it's like your family you haven't gotten to see in a long time and the lord's going to be like that with us right there's my son there's my daughter i knew your whole life when you were born in your mother's womb when you decided to make that choice and follow me and you walked away from the nonsense and you found the perfect love was me and you began to follow me i saw you mature and it was awesome and you brought people with you and you told everybody about me it was amazing isn't that awesome that's awesome that's gonna happen that's gonna happen one little seed died to itself one little seed grew a tree produced fruit and people came 
pluck from it, didn't they? That's what has to happen. You're that little seed, and you get planted in that soil. And when that tree grows, it produces fruit, and people come. And they want to find out what kind of fruit that is, right? Right? They do. So verse 18, I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly who are among you, to whom, is a, to whom it's a reproach, is a burden. A burden. Did you guys see that? It's a burden to go to church today, man. It's a burden to be here. I got stuff I want to do tonight, man. So I was planning on going to hotels, but they're going to be closed time I get out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm serious. There's people stop. Now, I don't like the worship music there, man. It's just not that good. Now, I'm not getting fed there, man. I'm not going. <laughs> you know what I mean? Seriously, can you guys hear that? It's too loud. The stuff for the kids is not good. I've been to all the churches. I've said the same thing. I've been. To, I'm not getting fed today. I've I told my wife that. But when I do seven days a week, I feed myself. <coughs> I feed myself and eat. When I come here, yes, I get edified. I get encouraged. I get sanctified. But the Holy Spirit should be in your life and doing that. Because if not, if you're coming once a week on Saturday expecting to get fed, you probably won't get all you need. You're not going to get all your vitamins. It's not going to happen. You're eating a vegan diet or something. I don't know. You need some protein. last you till Sunday. Yeah, yeah, it lasts <laughs> till the next day. So I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly who are among you, to whom it's a reproach is a burden. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all those who afflict you. Did you hear that? Did you guys hear that? All those people you prayed for. All those people you prayed for. And you're saying, I forgive you for the horrible things you did to me. Come to church. Screw you. Flip you off, whatever. They hate you. The vengeance is the Lord's, right? I'm not celebrating what he's going to do, but he says right here, I will deal with those who afflict you. Ouch. Can you imagine? Daddy's going to deal with those who afflicted you? I'd hate to be in their shoes about right now, wouldn't you? Somebody who tried to bring you down or cut your feet out from under you and help you walk away from God? I'm going to deal with those who afflict you. I will save the lame. He came for the lame and the broken and the sick, right? He goes, I'll save the lame and gather those who were driven out. I will appoint them for praise and fame. you see that? Everybody's going to know who you are. Why? And you're going to have a seal on you, right? A seal of the Holy Spirit, correct? You're going to be sealed. Everybody's going to know it. Who your daddy is. I will appoint for them praise and fame. In every land they were put to shame. At that time I will bring you back. And we know today, since 1948, we had Israel going back to Israel. He's brought a lot of them back. But we know there in that thousand year millennium, or in a thousand years, I believe it'll be here on earth. And he will bring back all the outcasts. He will bring them together. I totally believe that. Uh, I will appoint them for praise and fame in every land where they were put to shame. At that time, I will bring you back. Even at that time, I will gather you. Remember one time where Jesus says, and I wanted to gather you, and you know, like a hen gathers her chicks? He wanted to come back and then gather up the Israelites. But he couldn't. Why? Because they had their head up their butt. Not being gross, but they did. They, they weren't listening. They were, their hearts were too hard. Even at that time, I will gather you, if I will give you fame and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I return your captives before your eyes, says the Lord. Let's turn our Bibles to uh, another verse I was looking at. Let's turn to uh, Revelation chapter, um, not Revelation, Malachi chapter 3. Almost done. Malachi chapter 3. Just one chapter to your right. <coughs> Verse number 1. Behold, I will send my messenger he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, Jesus, in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? 
and he is like a refiner's fire and like launder's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering of righteousness. Verse 6. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord. As in the days of old, as in former years, I will come near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, adulterers, perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans, against those who turn away an alien, because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? Will a man rob God, yet they have robbed me? But you say, in what way, in what way have we robbed you? Entice and offerings. You were cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that, the, that there may be food in my house. And try me in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it, I'm sorry, receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for, for you will be in a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. One I'm going to actually I'll start a little bit further. Uh, verse 16. Those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him. So God remembers. There's a book of remembrance of those who want Who fear him. Right? And who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on that day that I make them my jewels. I will spare them. He's going to spare them. It says, as a man spares his own son who serves him. It says, then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, and all, and all who do wickedly will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. It says, but that will leave them neither root nor branch, but to you who fear my name. The son of righteousness shall arise with filling in his wings, and you shall go out and grow like fat, stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. On that day, on that day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts, remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in horror for all of Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children in the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. I'm going to stop right there. I have a little bit more, but I'm going to stop there. Uh, so the day of the Lord. The church, are we prepared? Are we prepared for the day of the Lord? Where are you at right now, God? And if he gave you the message for Zephaniah and Ari, it's for all of us. It's for all of us to hear this. And those who are watching on, uh, online and all of us who are here, where are you at? Where are you at? All we got to do, man, God is so merciful, guys. Receive his mercy today. Put your, head, your hand out. Receive God. Surrender to God, your will. And let it be his will. Die to yourself. Live for him. Before he does return. Before he does return. And the great white throne judgment, which will be after the thousand-year reign, you know that. He's going to separate what? The sheep and the goats, right? I don't want to be a goat. <laughs> I'm going to make that choice early. I'm going to make it early. Uh, Cody, did you want to share anything? Yeah. Was it testimony? Or... Yes. Okay. All right. well, let's wrap it up. Hold some hands here. We'll share some testimony after this. Brother Al, you want to wrap this prayer for us? Gracious Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for your word. Thank you for warning us and telling us how it's going to be at the end of time. I, I pray, Lord, that you'll send your spirit here to convict each and every one of us and, and to remind us that we need to keep our accounts with you short and we need to stay close to you at all times because you did say that the day of the Lord will come as a thief.
deep in the night, so we're not going to know um, when exactly that is. We will know when it is approaching, but when it, exactly when it comes, no man knows that. Only, only the Father does. So thank you for all this. We thank you for the message that is given to us, and please give us the strength and the courage um, just to move forward and to finish this race strongly.